Hi, I'm Mitch Gallagher. Welcome to the spring 2016 edition of Guitars and Gear. In this installment, we'll be checking out six great new products that were introduced earlier this year. Guitars, amplifiers, effects. We've got a lot of great things coming your way. And I'm joined by two partners in crime here. We have Don Carr, guitarist extraordinaire, also a content creator here at Sweetwater and the Sweetwater Studio staff guitarist. Yeah, that's me. Thanks, Mitch. Looking forward to it. And we have John Levy, publisher of Premier Guitar Magazine, fantastic guitarist, and also a purveyor of all things tone. Purveyor. A purveyor, I'm, yes. I'm hoping to measure up to that high praise, and I'm really looking forward to discussing some great gear with you guys. Well, we're glad to have you come in. Thanks for being here. To kick things off, we have the newest member of the Blues Cube family from Roland, the Blues Cube Hot. This amp really caught my eye and my ear at Winter Nam because it sounds great, but it's also very lightweight and compact. It's a great amp for grab it and go applications, great for the studio, and great for practicing at home. Check this out. Today we're checking out the Blues Cube Hot, a compact member of the Blues Cube family from Roland. Now this amplifier offers 30 watts of power. It's plenty to take to a rehearsal or to use on stage, but you can also turn the power down and use it for practicing in the bedroom. The Blues Cube Hot is based around Roland's Tube Logic modeling. Now this modeling is a proprietary process that models all of the individual components and how they interact to create an authentic tone from the amplifier. It really sounds like a real tube amplifier. We've got a single channel amp, but we also have a tone shift function that gives us additional tonal versatility, as well as a boost function that can push us into higher gain. The speaker is a 1x12 combo, and it's loaded with a proprietary V12 speaker from Roland that's designed to match with the Tube Logic circuitry. We have our input gain control, and we can go from clean sounds to nice crunch tones as well. And then with the addition of the boost function, which you can also activate with a foot switch, you can bring in higher gain tones. The tone switch modifies the operation of the tone stack. We have three band EQ in this amplifier, bass, treble, and middle. With the tone switch out, it's at one basic setting. When you push the tone switch in, you get different frequencies and different response. We also have built-in reverb as well as a master volume control, but one of the most interesting features is the power control, which allows us to switch the output power from 30 watts to 15 watts to 5 watts and all the way down to a half watt. On the back panel, we have a direct output that can be connected to a live sound console, or you could route that straight into your DAW for recording. We also have a headphone amp, and when you plug into that, the speakers disengage so you can practice silently. And we have a direct USB output that allows us to connect directly into a Mac or a PC and record straight into your DAW with no audio interface required. Let's check out some of the sounds of the Blues Cube Hot. I've got the tone control set at a fairly neutral position, and the gain control is at about 9 o'clock. With the humbuckers in this PRS Custom 24, we're getting a nice clean tone at this setting. We'll push the gain up to 12 o'clock. At this setting, we're starting to get some nice breakup from the preamp section, but Roland has also modeled the response to the power amp, so as we bring the master volume control up, we turn it up louder, we bring in more preamp gain, we're also getting some crunch from the power amp section, very much the way a real tube amplifier would operate. I'll push the gain up to 3 o'clock. At this setting, we're well into power amp distortion on the amplifier. It's really simulating the effects of those power tubes working hard, and we're getting some nice crunch out of the preamp as well. It's a nice sustaining tone without a lot of fuzz on top. <laughs> What I like about this amplifier is that it really feels like you're playing through real tubes. There's that sag, there's that give, there's that nice pick articulation as you're playing it. It really does respond the way a tube amplifier does. Now we'll dial the volume back to about 12 o'clock and engage the boost function. 
So here's without the boost function. It's a nice crunchy tone. Now we'll switch on the boost. That brings in a lot of sustain. It's a thick, fat tone that really rings well. Now we'll turn the boost off, bring the volume back down to about 9 o'clock, and we'll engage the tone circuit so you can hear what changes when we hit that tone switch. So our boost is off, our gain is back down. Here's our clean, basic sound. And now with the tone switch engaged. You can hear that we're getting a nice sparkling top end there, a little bit of a scoop maybe in the lower mid-range. It's not quite the same as engaging a bright switch. It's really opening the top end up and giving you that extra high frequency content. Now as I mentioned, one of the great things about this amplifier is with the power control, you can actually cut the amount of output power that it has, which brings the volume down dramatically. I'm going to demonstrate that for you. We're at the full power setting. I'll turn the tone switch off, bring us back up to about 12 o'clock on the gain. Master set there. So this is our full output level. <laughs> Now we'll switch to 15 watts. To 5 watts. And down to a half watt. What's really nice about this is that the volume drops dramatically, as I mentioned, but the tone stays constant and the feel of the amp stays constant. So it's not like we're taking a master volume control and really sucking the power out of the amplifier and turning it way down until it's just compressing and not really responding the same way. In this case, we're actually reducing the output power, and so we're dropping that down, but the dynamics, the response, the feel, and the tone of the amplifier remains consistent. If you're looking for an amplifier that gives you authentic tube tone, but is extremely lightweight, nice and compact, has that 12-inch speaker so you're getting good bottom end out of it, really responsive, really dynamic, then the Blues Cube Hot is an app you're definitely going to want to check out. <laughs>
The CE24 is a 24 fret bolt-on neck guitar, which is a little bit of a departure for what you normally think of with Paul Reed Smith. Um, this guitar actually was in production for 20 years and now they brought it back with a few updates and improvements. The CE24 has a beautiful figured maple top on top of a mahogany body. And PRS has done a couple of things to make this guitar really comfortable to play. You can see that the body is a little bit thinner and the top carve is a little more shallow. It's not nearly as dramatic. It's called a modified top carve. With this guitar being a 24 fret instrument, access is really important. You can see that the way they've got the carve here, you can get right up there. Absolutely no problem. There's plenty of room for your hand. The neck shape is in the PRS pattern thin, which feels really comfortable. And you've got uh, Indian rosewood for the fingerboard. Of course, we've got a matching maple headstock with PRS locking tuners. Another big update is the 8515 pickups. These things are big and fat sounding, really clear, really articulate. There's also a push-pull control on the tone pot, and that splits the coils. I'm playing a PRS Custom 20 amp. Let's listen to this thing on the clean channel. Check this bad boy out. That was a neck pickup in humbucker mode. Let's check it out now with both pickups together. And now the bridge pickup, humbucker. Now let's listen to everything with the coil split on the pickups. Oh, and I can't forget to mention the PRS trim. That's one of my favorite things about PRS guitars, man. Sounds great, stays in tune, love it. And there you have it, a quick look at the PRS CE24, an awesome new guitar from PRS. <laughs> So Don, nice job in that video. Obviously Thanks. great playing, man. I always, always enjoy listening to you play. You know, one of the things that struck me about that guitar when it arrived here mm -hmm. is when we opened the case up, the thing is just so resonant. It just rang like a bell. Oh man, it really does. It's such a great sounding guitar overall and a great feeling guitar. Of course, you know, the 24 fret access is just amazing. You know, the, the way the uh, the carve is, so you can get your hand up there and get to all the 24 frets, super simple. You look like you're having a great time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a great Tell me guitar. a little bit about the pickups. Those 8515 pickups seem to be beefy and articulate at the same time. Mm -hmm. They are, they're full and fat sounding, but they're not, um, like it's not your typical overwound kind of sound, you know? I mean, it's driving the amp a little bit harder, but it's a full range tone. And I know that you love the tremolo. How does the oh, yeah. new carve of the top feel, the, the sculpting of the body? Oh man, that's great because uh, you don't have that same ridge that usually hits your arm, you know, which I mean is a, for me, it's kind of like a, a check mark almost. It's like, I can feel it. It's like, oh yeah, my arm's there. But you know, this felt equally so as- uh, Your yeah. arm out like this. Yeah, right, equally as comfortable. More comfortable. <laughs> yeah. Right, yeah, I think the originals had uh, the HFS and Dragon pickups in there. Right. So it was a little bit hotter right. output on that. So that yeah. is one difference with these new ones. Mm -hmm. But to me, it gives it a more open sound. And you still get a great tone when you switch to the single coil. Right, right, yeah, the split coil sound is great too, obviously. A versatile guitar indeed. Yeah. Again, with the 24 frets, yeah. it's not to love. Next up, let's check out another amplifier. Don had a chance to sit down with the Husen Kettner Tube Meister Deluxe 20. Now this is an all tube amplifier that's loaded with features. It has a built-in red box, it has tube safety control, has a power attenuator, lots and lots of features in this great sounding amp. <laughs>
The Tubemeister Deluxe 20 is a portable, versatile 20 watt head that has a built in power soak. It also has a built in Redbox AE and it's all tube. So let's check this thing out. So here's how the amp is laid out. Got an input, of course, and you've got your clean channel here with a gain and a volume, and you've got your lead channel with a gain and a volume. And you can see that there's a switch above that for the boost. Now the boost is actually like a third voice, so it's really more like a third channel, and you've got shared EQ for all three channels. So there's the clean channel. You can hear that it's a big, fat, clear tone. I've got uh, the gain set less than halfway. You can gain it up a little more and it starts getting a little hair on it. In fact, here, let's check it out. So you can hear that's a really fat, punchy sound. As you turn up the gain, you just get a little more compression. You get a little more gain, a little more overdrive. Just starts to break up, nice and big and fat, good for rhythm. So the lead channel kind of picks up where that left off in terms of gain. Here it is at a uh, lower setting. There's a lot of bite, a lot of definition, and we're just starting to get into the gain. Let's crank it up here a bit. And a little more. With the gain all the way up on the lead channel, it gets really thick, really super creamy. So you think, where do you go from there with the boost channel? Well, it's slightly revoiced. It is more gain, but it's slightly revoiced. So let's check that out. Finally, all the way up. That huge amount of range in the gain spectrum of this amp, it's pretty amazing how I've pretty much left the EQ alone. It's a three band EQ and it's voiced great for, you know, carving out mids or you know, taming highs or adding more highs to something that's a little muddy sounding or, you know, or beefing up the low end. I mean, really, it's really well voiced, but the point is that the amp is really even across the spectrum. The back panel has a great sounding buffered effects loop, and right next to that is a jack for a foot switch. You can get the uh, optional FS2 foot switch, and what it does is it'll change channels. It'll change between the clean channel, the dirty channel, and the boost function. And another cool feature is the tube safety control. Of course, with tubes, you're always worried about their life. And in this case, the uh, tube safety control monitors the tubes constantly and keeps them at their optimum performance. A feature that makes this amp really versatile is the power soak. You can go from 20 watts to five to one or to completely silent. In silent mode, the speaker is completely muted and the signal is sent to the red box AE direct out. And better than that, a dummy load is actually applied to the amp, so you don't have to have your speaker plugged in at all, which makes it great for recording directly or for a silent stage. The Redbox AE is a cabinet emulated direct out, and it really sounds good. Uh, you can see it uses an XLR, and you've got a couple of voicing options. We'll take a listen to it a little bit later. Finally, there's a single speaker output that will operate at either 8 or 16 ohms. I'm using a Hughes & Kettner TM212 with two vintage 30 Celestian speakers in it, and it's actually at 16 ohms. I've got a Digitech Polaro reverb in the effects loop, and I've got a Wampler Tumnus in the front end of the amp, and we'll check this thing out with some pedals. <laughs> Here's a low gain, slightly boosted setting on the Tumnus going into the clean channel on the Tube Meister.
let's listen to what the Deluxe 20 sounds like direct. I'm going to come straight out of the uh, Redbox DI into Pro Tools and play along with some tracks and we'll check it out. So thanks for checking out the Hughes and Kettner TubeMeister Deluxe 20 with me. It's a great sounding amp, man. It's really versatile, it's stage ready, it's studio ready, and I appreciate you watching. That's just a great sounding amp. John, could you see taking that on stage? Absolutely. And using it in the studio, I gotta say. Mm -hmm. It has the power attenuation, it's got the direct out, it has all these features that make it ideal for both stage and studio. You looked like you were having a little bit too much fun with it. It's a great sounding amp, what can I say, man? A lot of versatility, again, in a really small package that's uh, easy to operate. The part that I loved is at the end there where you had it on your desk, in your office, and you're yeah. recording tracks. Yeah. I mean, being able to take that direct out with the red box straight into your computer really makes it easy to lay stuff down. Yeah, it does, and it's also great for any kind of silent stage setup as well. Like I said, you know, I could, I could see that, you know, House of Worship or, you know, or anything where you've got in-ear monitors, you know, trying to keep a silent stage. Right, it's using it as a monitor on stage and then having yeah. the direct out going there. Right, right, you can do that as well. And you, you had it driving a 2x12 cabinet, <laughs> correct? Yeah. But it'll, yeah. it'll drive a 4x12 sure. or obviously a 1x12 for a really compact rig. Yeah. Clean, mean, everything in between. You got it. Loved it. So now that we've checked out a couple of amps on an electric guitar, let's move into the acoustic world. I had a chance to sit down with the Martin Grand Performance 28 e acoustic guitar. It's a fabulous sounding guitar, it plays great, but the really cool thing about it is, it features a Fishman Aura VT enhanced system that allows you to plug straight in, yet sound like you have a microphone on the guitar. Check this out. Today we're checking out the Martin GPC-28E, a grand performance size guitar that also features the Fishman Aura VT enhanced pickup system. The GPC-28E is a limited edition guitar that features a solid spruce top, East Indian rosewood back and sides, a mahogany neck, a black ebony fingerboard, and a matching black ebony bridge. It also has an East Indian rosewood overlay on the headstock. The guitar features a shallow oval neck carve. Now this is a comfortable neck shape, not real deep, and it has a bit of a V-shape here right on the peak of the back. The string spacing is comfortable whether you're playing finger style, single note lines, or strumming chords. GPC-2080 is also what Martin calls playability enhanced. Now this means that Martin's used a Plec Pro system, a computer guided system to dress the frets and to cut the nut. This results in extremely smooth playability, the lowest possible action with minimal fret buzz. The GPC-2080's body shape is what Martin calls their grand performance shape. It's a comfortable, smaller sized body, not quite as deep, with rounded shoulders, still produces nice tight bottom end but not boomy. It's a full sounding guitar with good articulation on top and rich punchy mid-range. The cutaway body shape provides easy access all the way to the highest fret. We do have 14 frets clear of the body and a total of 20 frets. The guitar has a balanced sound from top to bottom. And rings clear all the way to the top of the fingerboard. 
The GPC-28E also features Fishman's Aura VT enhanced pickup system. Now this is exclusive to Martin guitars and it allows several things. First of all, we have an under saddle pickup with volume and tone controls. We have a second transducer mounted underneath the bridge plate and it comes out to a control here labeled enhanced. The enhanced system contains an actual picture of a microphone placed away from the body of the guitar so you get a real acoustic image stored inside that enhanced control. As you bring that up you can blend it with the under saddle pickup and it gives you a very realistic picture of what's going on inside the guitar in a very authentic tone. At this point in the video we'll turn the microphones off and we'll run the Aura VT enhanced system straight into the cameras. We'll begin with the enhanced system turned all the way down. The controls are a volume control, a tone control, and then the enhanced controls here at the bottom of the sound hole. They're easily accessible while you're playing. Now I'll turn the enhanced system all the way up. You can hear that with the Aura VT enhanced system applied to our guitar tone, it's much more authentic. What you're hearing is the sound of a real microphone being applied to the guitar's direct signal. I hope you've enjoyed this look at the GPC 2080 acoustic electric guitar from Martin. Featuring the grand performance body shape, it's very comfortable to play, yet it has a nice punchy full round sound. With the Aura VT enhanced electronics, it sounds great coming through a live sound system or through a recorder. It's a wonderful guitar for the studio, for the stage, or just strumming at home. So guys, I, th I think this VT Enhanced system is something that we really need to talk about because it is very cool. I've played a lot of acoustic guitars. I do a, an acoustic duo gig regularly, and you know, you plug your guitar into a pedal and you get great sounds, but having that on board the guitar is just a huge thing. Yeah, it's just one less thing you got to drag with you, you know, to the gig, obviously. Yeah. I, I was really struck by how organic this particular system sounded. I think this one's actually a specially formulated VT Enhanced system just for this model, Martin. Yeah, it's proprietary to this, this particular model, the Grand Performance 28E, and it has a specific microphone there that they've chosen to, to provide the optimal sound for that guitar when you plug it straight it's, it's in. It's really organic, which I think was the most striking thing about it. And when you play it, it feels like you're playing an acoustic guitar. When you play it through an, a PA system or into a recorder right, or something like that, right. it feels like you're playing an acoustic guitar because you're getting that resonance from the body. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I mean, it really represents the guitar sound itself, too. I mean, the transition between the two was like, Wow, you know, between the mic sound and the plugged in sound. It's not subtle. Yeah. Don, I gotta say, I don't know if you were struck about it like I was, but this is a different type of Martin, and yet it has that little Martin je ne sais quoi, mm -hmm. something that really defines yes. the tonality. Absolutely. So guys, now that we've checked out some things in the electric world and the acoustic world, now let's check out a stomp box. Earlier this year, Electro Harmonics introduced the Lester G. Now this is a rotating speaker simulator that has some great extended features, a built-in compressor, built-in drive control to simulate an overdriven tube amplifier in a rotating speaker. And this is a very interesting effects pedal because it simulates what happens in a Leslie speaker, where you have a rotating horn to do the treble frequencies and a rotating cylinder to do the bass frequencies. This pedal recreates all of those effects. <laughs> The Lester G is designed to really give you a complete experience of playing through a rotating speaker. In fact, there's even a drive control that simulates like the rotating speaker's amp breaking up. Uh, you've got two separate speed controls and you've got a brake function, so that's like the speaker stopped, not moving at all. And you've also got a compressor circuit in there that simulates the sag and the squash of the amp really working hard. So let me show you how it works. The pedal's kind of divided up this way. You've got the Leslie section over here, and then the compressor here, and the drive circuit here. 
You've got an overall output volume and then the slow speed and the fast speed. You can set those independently, but if you leave them in the center, it's roughly where a typical rotating speaker is. You've got a balance control, which is the blend between the horn and the rotor, so turning it clockwise gives you more horn, a brighter sound, and turning it counterclockwise gives you the rotor, a darker sound. Acceleration is how quickly it transitions between slow and fast speeds. I've got the acceleration set all the way up, so that's almost an instantaneous transition. If you turn it down, obviously it's much slower. This is a foot switch for either the speed or the brake control. If you tap it, it changes from one speed to the other, and if you hold it down, then it creates a brake. Got a drive control, you turn that up and it simulates the amp being overdriven. You've got an attack and sustain control for the compressor and you've got a squash button there, which gives you a higher compression ratio. Man, when you punch that thing, it gets really juicy. You can plug in an expression pedal. That controls the speed, so you can do that on the floor at whatever rate you want to. Uh, the uh, bypass switch is actually a buffered bypass, and it comes with an included 9-volt AC adapter. I'm playing a Fender Strat through an Orange Crush 35 RT and a Fender Princeton Reverb, and here it is with the Lester G bypassed. <laughs> Let's listen to the slow setting. Let's listen to the balance between the horn and the rotor. And here it is in brake mode. Let's check out the acceleration control. Let's listen to the drive and compression circuit. I'm going to crank them up individually so you can hear exactly what they do. So there you have it, the Electroharmonics Lester G Deluxe Rotary Speaker. Man, this thing really sounds good and it's a lot of fun to play. Now for the outro, I'm going to use the expression pedal and transition back and forth between slow and fast modes. <laughs> Don, one of the things that impressed me about this pedal is the expressive capabilities that it has, both being able to break the speaker rotating drum and, right. and a horn, right. as well as the fact that you can plug in an expression pedal and really take real-time control over what's happening there. 
Yeah, having real-time control over the uh, uh, speed is awesome. I mean, especially with the pedal, you know, you can do that at any rate you want. But then you've got the brake button, which also is the uh, speed control button, and then you can set the uh, amount of acceleration, you know, which is the uh, rate which it changes back between fast and slow. So with all of those combinations, you've got a lot of control. Right, when you hear a Hammond player and they're using a Leslie speaker, yeah. they're working that speaker all the time. The, the speed is changing, right. they're bringing things in and out, and you can right. do the same thing with this pedal. Yeah, absolutely, and again, it's just that extra level of expression you got. Yeah, right. so hats off to Electro Harmonics for taking a truly classic and iconic type of effect and being able to shrink it down to, it's almost doing it injustice to just call it a stomp box. This thing really captures that organic feel and it seemed to be inspiring you during that outro section in particular. Uh, well, I'm telling you, man, it is the full experience, really. I mean, that's that's what's amazing to me is that, you know, it's it's one of those like, you know, hear it on a recording or, or shut your eyes and play, and it's just, it's the whole package. We're so used to hearing this on classic recordings that yeah. we've grown up with, and to be right. able to go ahead and actually right. hear that range in the pedal, I think it's pretty dramatic. Yeah, very cool. Right. Definitely a lot easier than uh, lugging a uh, 145 <laughs> oh, cabinet yeah. around with no you from gig to gig, right? No kidding. <laughs> So guys, the last of our six products for this edition of Guitars and Gears, the PV Viper Pro 100 amplifier. Now this is a combo amplifier, has 100 watts of power, 526 presets, every effect, every amplifier you can imagine, it's a super versatile amp. <laughs> Today we're checking out the Viper Pro amplifier from PV. This is a 100 watt modeling amplifier that offers incredible versatility. There are more than 100 different effects and amplifiers on board. You have tons of real time control. There's an optional computer editor that you can download for free. And there's also an optional foot controller, the Viper Sampera Pro, that gives you total control over everything that's happening inside the amplifier. One of the amazing things about the Viper Pro is that it's totally self-contained. Really all you need is a guitar, in this case I'm playing a PRS Custom 24, a cable, and the amplifier, and you've got everything else that you need right here inside this enclosure. We've got a 1 by 12 inch design, it's using a custom voice speaker, and the way this is set up is it's a modeling amplifier, but it uses a trans-tube analog preamplifier, so you're getting four different stages of gain there that really simulates the sound of a real tube. <laughs> The Viper Pro uses a unique modeling architecture. There are two DSP processors inside the amplifier, and what we have is four modeling bays, and you can load an effect or an amplifier into any of those bays and use them in parallel or as a monster signal path. This lets you create complex layered tones that are much bigger than just using a single amplifier model. From the front panel, we have control over all the different parameters. We have basic amplifier controls here. We've got a pre-gain, a post-volume, and then bass, middle, and treble controls. We also have a master volume control, so that post volume is really used for balancing the level of the different presets. Speaking of presets, we have room for more than 500 presets here. They're arranged into 126 banks of four. You have delay and reverb effects available at all times, and those can be accessed by hitting the shift key, at which point these five controls then become parameter controls for the delay and the reverb. We have tap tempo for the delay, and there's also a foot switchable boost function. On the back panel, we have a microphone emulated output that can be routed straight to a live sound console or into an interface for recording. Speaking of recording, the Viper Pro also features a USB port that can be used for direct connection to a computer. Rounding out the feature set, we have an 8th inch auxiliary input for an MP3 or a CD player. Creating a preset inside the Viper Pro is very simple. We use the four model bays to load in effects and amplifiers. Simply turn the knob to select the model that you want and press it to load that model. Make your settings using the parameter controls. We can set the tones, the gains, and the volume levels here. Hit the shift control to set up our delay and our reverb. And then we can load additional models, whether effects or additional amplifiers, by simply moving to another slot, turning the knob, and pressing to load. We can also access advanced parameters by pressing the button here. We can tap in the tempo for our delay. And when we're finished, we can store that preset into one of the 126 banks, each containing four presets, right inside the Viper Pro. Now you can control the Viper Pro using the front panel. You can also access it via MIDI. There's a MIDI port on the back, and there's also a MIDI port on the Sampera Pro foot pedal. This allows you to interface with external MIDI gear or to use a MIDI system to control your Viper Pro. You're also going to want to add the optional Sampera Pro foot pedal to your system. You have total control in real time over the features of the amplifier. You can turn models on and off, select presets, and control other functions as well. Let's take a quick tour. We have two foot pedal controllers. By default, the one on the left is a volume control, and the one on the right is a walk control. But either one can be assigned to any other parameter that you like. 
Across the bottom, we select presets. We can bank up and down through the different presets and select presets by simply stepping on the one through four switches. In the middle row, we can turn models on and off. We can also engage the reverb and the delay. Across the top, we can engage our boost function. We can also tap in the tempo for the delay. Or if you hold this button, we'll switch to the tuner. And at the far right, we have controls for the onboard looper. Now you can't access the looper in any other way besides using the Sampera, so you're going to want to have this if you're working with loops. Let me show you how the Viper Pro and the Sampera Pro work in action. We'll begin with the first preset, A1, which is Legend. We'll bring the volume up using our volume pedal. We can step on the wah. We can turn off the delay, turn off the reverb, bring the delay back in. So we have lots of real-time control of our amp and effect chain using the Sanpera Pro. If we move to another preset, say number two here, that has two different models loaded. We can turn off the phaser. Now some presets have multiple amps loaded up in parallel. For example, heavy hand. In this case, we have four different amplifiers. Let's turn those off so we can hear them individually. No amplifiers. The 6534. The Uber. The 3120. And the diesel. When we combine those four amplifiers together, we get a massive tone. In addition to amplifier and effects models, the Viper Pro also features instrument models. So we can load up acoustic guitars, we can load up 12-string guitars, or even a 7-string guitar. Let me demonstrate that for you. We'll switch over here to our bank. To show you the difference, I'll turn off the seven string model. Now, of course, we also have all our other effects available no matter what models we have loaded up. So we still have wah here. While it's very easy to create presets using the front panel of the Viper Pro, it's even easier when you use the optional computer editor. Now this is a free download from Mac or PC. Let's take a quick tour of how it works. We'll begin with the main screen of the editor, which shows us our four modeling bays. We can load anything we want into those. We can load instruments, and here we have a choice of resonator guitar, sitar, electric violin, synthesizer. If we scroll up, we'll see doubler, recoil, decoil, bass, baritone. 7-string, 12-string, classical acoustic, fat acoustic. So you have a wide variety of things, and you can drag those straight into one of the bays. And if we decide we don't want that particular model, we can clear it out of the slot. Close up our instruments. We have stomp boxes. Next up, we have amplifiers. And we can have up to four amplifiers loaded simultaneously. They'll operate in parallel to give us massive tones. So you can drag those in, create a composite tone. We also have onboard effects that we can select from. Let's create a quick preset. We'll select a uh, seven string guitar. So it will model that for us. We'll run that through a phase shifter. And then we'll set up an amplifier here. We'll choose an ecstasy, put that in. And in our final slot, we'll put in a uh, rotary speaker effect. We can then look at some of the other parameters. We can open this up here. We can see our utility set up here. On our input page, we can turn the bright switch on and off. This is where our noise gate lives, so if we're working on a high gain preset, we can use this to keep things quiet. Switching to our output page, this is where we set up our boost. We have control over the amount of the boost, as well as boost on and off. We can set up the looper level in relation to the dry signal, presence, resonance, and so on. We also have a page that gives us access to our reverb and delay parameters. So we can check a reverb type. We'll choose a, a spring reverb. In that case, we have room size and level available to us. In our delay type, we can choose a modulated delay, set it up to a quarter note. 
We can shift the delay time, level control, feedback, and so on. Once we've set all our parameters where we want them for our effects, for our amplifier, for our processing, we can save all of those settings as a single preset. You do that up here in the file menu, save preset, and you can load that preset to the amplifier as well. Then we can move on to the next preset in the bank. We can create that, load in whatever we like, move on to the next bank, and again, we have 126 different banks with four different presets, so we have more than 500 presets available to use. I hope you've enjoyed this look at the Viper Pro amplifier and the Sanpera Pro foot pedal. It's an incredible system that encompasses all of your effects, even instruments, along with amplifiers, direct recording options, direct outputs for feeding into a PA system. It's a 100 watt amplifier, and it also features a power soak so it can turn it down to whisper volume levels without affecting the tone or the dynamics. To wrap up, I'll play out using a variety of different presets on the Viper Pro so you can hear the wide range of tones this versatile amplifier can create. If you have questions on this or any other PV products, give your Sweetwater sales engineer a call. One of the hardest things with checking out the Viper Pro 100 was condensing that huge feature list down into just a few minutes. I mean, it was yeah, really okay. hard to cover all those features. But what I don't want to get lost here is how great the amplifier sounds. Because mm -hmm. no matter what tone you're creating, whether you're going for a, an organic 60s tone or a, a processed 80s or 90s tone or a modern 2016 tone, I mean, it's all inside that app and they all sound great. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, the control and the flexibility, especially when you add the pedal, the Sanpere Pro with it. I mean, that's pretty I think awesome. that's the most important part. It's great to have all this power under the hood, mm -hmm. but with the Sanpere Pro, you can actually access this power in a way that's meaningful when you're on stage or in the studio and you really need to get your sound quickly. Yeah, I really consider it an essential part of this, and I think of it as a system. The amplifier and the pedal together really is, is the way that, that you want to have it, especially on stage. Talk about the, uh, the editor. Being able to go ahead and edit the programs, was it a pretty quick, user-friendly process? Super easy. I mean, it's all graphic, it's all drag and drop, the controls are right there in front of you. You can build up a whole library of presets, so it's all backed up and ready to go if, if uh, you lose a preset or you want to load something different in. That, that really adds to the experience. And the feel of the amp, when you're going ahead and actually working through these various types of configurations, do you really get the sense that an organic feel that's delivering the goods? Yeah, you know, I, I talked to the guys at PV about this, and, and they were talking about their, their quest, I'll use that word quest again, to, uh, to get an organic tone out of it. And part of it is that four-stage preamp, that analog preamp, that really does simulate the way the tubes work. So the feel of the amp is right, it has a nice depth to it, it's, it's, it's a great sound an amp. Who's it designed for? What kind of player? Are you talking about people who are cover bands, worship bands? It'd be awesome for a cover band because no matter what era you're playing from, you can get the tones that you want. If you're playing in a worship situation, or like we had talked about, if you're in a number of different bands, you right. know, it, it's, it's ideal yeah. because you can have this set of presets mm -hmm. for this band and this set for another, or taken into the studio. It really is super versatile. To set up a bank for each band. 
So guys, this has been a blast. I mean, there's nothing better than sitting around talking about gear, <laughs> guitars, pedals, amplifiers, and I appreciate you uh, joining me here. Oh, absolutely, man. I, we'd be doing this anyway, right? Sitting around talking about gear. Absolutely. It is what we, we do. do yeah. right. Glad to join you guys. Yeah. yeah, well, we'll look forward to doing more of these in the future. I hope you guys will come back and, uh, and sit in with me again. We've got a couple more coming up. Absolutely, John. We're going to look forward to doing more of these in the future. And thank you for joining me for Guitars and Gear Spring 2016 edition. We'll have more of these coming to you this year. I hope you'll tune in with us. We'll be talking about guitars, amps, effects. We're going to have a lot of fun. I'm Mitch Gallagher from Sweetwater.